Okay, you're on. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining Native Wellness Institute for today's Native Wellness Power Hour. Yeah, we're going to talk about Activism 101. And I'm hoping to take you through activism, what it means to me, uh, what it has meant to Indian country, and what I hope uh, that it be comes to mean for you. So if you have questions, please um, post them up and I will endeavor to answer them as we go along. And let's do this. Okay, there we go. Okay, so who am I? A, I am a Cheyenne warrior. I come from a long line of activists. I've heard the story of my own father, Clifton Roman Nose, who came back from a protest um, in California once, came back to Oklahoma, hopped the train, and when he arrived, uh, it'd been, the protest had been so rough that he only had one moccasin. So sometimes you leave a piece of your own belongings and yourself behind, and that's okay. Um, what you take with you is what's important, and what you leave behind is um, also can be quite important. So let's talk about what you can do as an individual for activism. I have been active in my life for decades now, and it's funny to say that for decades, um, all of a sudden you're, you know, you're not a kid anymore, and all of a sudden you look at other people and you think of them as kids, and you realize, wait, they're not that old. I mean, I remember being that old and um, that's when you go, oh, I really am old because I'm calling people in younger ages uh, old. So I did a petition for Standing Rock. Uh, I did a change.org petition. And uh, because I was really concerned of what was going on there and, and I've taken part in many protests. My children grew up going to protests. And this particular petition, when it closed, it had 113,636 supporters. And that was uh, posted up um, November 8th, 2016. And you can look that up, that, uh, feel free to do that. It's important that you um, find facts because they're all around you. And it's important that we deal in facts. A lot of times you're gonna have conversations with people that may not be comfortable, either for them or for you. And that's okay. The important thing is to remain calm and share the facts as you know them and be willing to teach other people. And I realize as Native people that we are teaching all the time. Oftentimes we're the only uh, Native person in the class or the only Native person in the workplace, and that can get tiring. So I want you to know that you should take care of yourself. Don't get weary. Don't give up. Don't think you're not making a difference because you are. I never would have imagined that this many people would have responded to a little petition that I put in. And um, I would hope that the things that I'm sharing with you will help you to reach other people in a good way, with a good heart and a good mind. So there are a lot of different ways that you can engage. You can become a writer, you can blog, you can have a podcast. Um, the most important thing that you can do is educate yourself. So what does that mean, educate yourself? That means exactly what I said, educate yourself. Now, does that mean that you become the expert? No, not necessarily. You don't have to become the expert. You don't have to be perfect, but educate yourself about all aspects of the topic you're talking about. How can you make a difference about this particular topic? So find out from many different sources, not just um, media, not just 
social uh, media, not just newspaper articles, talk to people. People will tell you um, what they had to do to promote activism. Billy Frank Jr. probably wouldn't have called himself an activist, but he was. He was an amazing individual, amazing human being. Um, Billy Frank um, Jr. never met a stranger. And I've heard many people use that phrase, but it truly fit. And he was once asked in, uh, we were at a conference together and he was asked, how many times have you been arrested? And he said, I stopped counting at 50. Over 50 times he'd been arrested protecting treaty rights. Um, Hank Adams, another activist warrior. You know, each of us are warriors in our own way. Whether it's uh, for Indian child welfare, whether it's for healthcare, it's for um, food sustainability, um, food sovereignty. There are so many different causes you, are, you can, that you can choose from. Don't wear yourself out because it's easy to go, oh, I wanna change the world. I wanna do all of this, all of this. Well, start, start simply. Educate yourself. What is the topic that you want to engage other people on? And then once you have educated yourself and you've asked other people, ask your elders, how did they bring us to where we are today? Because even though activism wasn't always a, a word that we utilized, many of our leaders, um, were activists in their time. Many of them did things that we would look back at now and say, boy, that person was a great activist. Good. What can we learn from them? What did they do? How did they affect change? Did they affect change? How did they affect perception? Right now, we're seeing the world change. And sadly, it took the horrific death of another human being to bring us to this point. It took many deaths of many human beings to bring us to this point. Not just in American history, but in world history. So the world is standing with us right now and they're shouting and they're mourning and they're changing their countries because they see it needs to be changed. We are all human beings. We are all in the image of our creator. Some of us just have a better tan than others. Oh, after you educate yourself and you choose a topic, uh, for myself, a couple things have happened that I've been able to be a part of in an activist way besides Standing Rock. Um, although that was just a, that was a small thing in my mind, uh, although it did reach a lot of people, to me, it wasn't, it wasn't difficult. It was easy to do a change.org petition. It was very easy to do that. And once you do, once your petition reaches 100,000 uh, people, then it goes um, to the federal government. It goes to the White House. And, you know, hopefully from there, we can get real change, not just expend our energy uselessly. So you've educated yourself and you've talked to your elders and you've chosen a topic that you wanna pursue. So one of the topics I pursued a while back, this was not recent, it was um, back in 2020, there was a slogan and there was a t-shirt being made by a company called The Gap. So The Gap created this t-shirt that said, uh, manifest destiny. Now, I don't know how that term makes you feel, but to see that on a t-shirt was highly inflammatory. And I wrote a letter to The Gap. And at that time, 10 years ago, um, I didn't have as many followers and it, followers wasn't as big of a deal um, 10 years ago as it is today. 
But I mentioned in, in my letter, look, I have X number of followers on my Facebook page and I'm gonna encourage them to shop somewhere other than the gap if some action is not taken um, in reference to this terrible, terrible article of clothing. So what happened is um, that letter was read by the gap. And that letter went um, to a lot of different news sources and ended up on um, ABC News. So little things like just a letter. Hey, I don't like what you're doing. Um, what you're doing is promoting racism and I don't like that. That's basically what my letter said. And I have friends and they're not gonna like it and I'm gonna tell them. So use your power of social media, use your power of um, the written word, those talking leaves people do listen to now. So another event that I was um, engaged in was a uh, was when I was in grad school at Oregon State. And we had a really unfortunate um, thing happen there. We had this graphic show up on the cover of the daily barometer. And so I wrote about it as a columnist because I, at that time I was writing, um, it was one of my seven part-time jobs when I was in grad school and I was writing about it. And I said, blackface, it's just for racists. Well, I wrote my column and the daily barometer refused to publish it. And it went underground and was read to the football team and read in classes and, um, the reason it went underground is because someone at the Longhouse, the Native American Longhouse at Oregon State said to me, hey, where's your column? It's not in the paper today. I said, well, they refused to publish my column uh, until I meet with the exec board or the um, advisory board of the paper because they think I've done something wrong by protesting um, this image of a white kid painted in blackface and the promotion of such a, a thing. And we all know you know, we're smart people, we know what that means. And it, it, long story short, it did affect change at Oregon State. It did make um, people have uncomfortable conversations in a good way. And I'm grateful for that. I'm glad that happened. It needed to happen. Oops, sorry, I'm trying to, I noticed I'm kind of in the dark over here. Oh, that helps a little bit. I hope you all can see me okay. So. You educate yourself, you know what your topic is, and um, then you plan it yourself. What am I gonna do now? Am I gonna engage social media? Yeah, use it, use Instagram, use Facebook, use Twitter, use, I use all those platforms to promote the causes that I believe in. And another great um, platform that I have used a lot is called ResistBot. Now they're available on Facebook. You can Google them and find out more about them. Basically, um, you contact them and you type in the word resist on your phone. Simple, simple, type it up here. Um, so you type in resist and you get, hi, I'm resist bot. Da, da, da. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Okay, so ResistBot will give you suggestions if you want, and they'll tell you, say Congress, um, House, Senate, State, or President to choose who to, who to um, contact. I always click Congress because it contacts the most amount of people. And it's, it is a free service, but they do request, hey, if you can support us, we do this um, as a nonprofit, but we do need help with because they also do mailings. Uh, so you'll you'll type up a letter with ResistBot and they'll send it for you. They will fax all of the people that you ask them to send it to. And it's super simple to, to use, super easy. You can look them up, like I said, on Facebook. Okay, so you're using social media. What are you gonna do with that? Tag people, tag people in your post. Hey, I'd like you to hear about this topic. I'm here's a letter I wrote, or here's uh, my feelings today about um, the George Floyd protests and the the actions in Seattle. 
here's what I think about police reform or community policing. So don't be afraid to use your voice. Creator gave you a voice for a reason. Use it for good. Use it. Your voice is more powerful than you know. So if you're using, you're using social media, it can reach a lot of people. And so you have to choose your words carefully and be careful not to use words that incite people to violence. That's something I'm very careful about. And when people get fired up, sometimes I try to, I try to talk them back down. Look, that's not um, what the goal is. The goal is not to overthrow the government. So the goal is not to um, take over a building. Although we've done a lot of that in the past, maybe that's some something that we'll utilize again in the future. But I, I hope we don't have to come to that. I hope that we can open dialogue with people and um, effect real change in our lifetimes. And I've seen it happen. So I fully know these things work. Okay, so something else that you can do is you can volunteer. Um, you can volunteer for something, a fundraiser for something that a cause you believe in. Maybe you're, you're, you have a family member who's had breast cancer. Volunteer for organizations that support um, finding a cure for cancer. And there are a plethora of them. If that's what you wanna do, then I fully encourage you to do that. There are so many causes out there, you could just get dizzy with it. It's sometimes a little daunting, sometimes a little heartbreaking and don't let it be heartbreaking to you. Find other people who think the same way you think, like-minded people. Find people who understand the causes that you are interested in and talk to them about your activism. Well, what can I do to help? How can I, how does what I'm doing make a difference? Just by being there, just by showing up, that makes a difference. That makes a difference. So we are educating ourselves. We're using social media. We're using things like change.org. Um, you can also do um, efforts to raise money for different causes. I know that Facebook throws that up all the time, you know, create a, a donation for your cause, which is great. If that's what you want to do, then do that. And don't be afraid to do that. It, you know, if people can donate, they will. If they can't, then they won't. And it's okay. Be patient with yourself. Every single thing that you're trying to learn, there's a learning curve for. And sometimes I have to tell myself that as well. It's okay. The change that you make doesn't have to be huge. The letter I wrote to the Gap about a t-shirt, that's not gonna change the world. It's not gonna change the world at all. But I feel better knowing that people aren't walking around with t-shirts to say manifest destiny. We manifest our destiny every day. And as Native people, we are living testaments to the continuity of our people, the courage, the strength of our ancestors. All that flows through us. So we are walking activists just without a cause. And now if you give us a cause, boom, we are fierce. We are fierce, be fierce. Don't be afraid to use your voice. It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be a big, gigantic, I'm gonna cure cancer. It doesn't have to be that. I'm gonna help. I'm gonna do my part. If you can cure cancer, that's awesome, do it. But if you can help along the way, that's fantastic. 
So look at also other perspectives, other people. What are they doing? What activities are they doing? How are they doing them? You know, I see the people in the streets. Um, we actually live a long way. We live about two hours from Seattle. So, and I, I'm recently recovering from a pretty severe injury. So I can't walk very well right now. And I have not been able to go and attend that. And be, due to COVID-19, I probably wouldn't attend either because I have underlying health issues that make it um, dangerous for me to go into a situation where there are a lot of people around and, and some of whom may have COVID-19. So keep your health in mind. Keep in mind, um, is it safe to take my child? I, I, my kids grew up going to protests a lot, um, frequently, and now they're um, 30 and 27. And my son said Friday that he was gonna go to a protest um, this weekend. So they, they've grown up with that. They've grown up with activism and knowing and seeing and learning and being a part of these movements. So I'm really proud of them that they're still involved and they're still caring about their communities and about the world. And they're balanced about it. So that's a healthy thing too. Don't, don't overextend yourself on these things because that's not healthy either. So you're planning on going to a protest. You're thinking, should I take my child? Should I not? Look at the conditions, evaluate the situation yourself. You're a smart cookie. If you don't think it's gonna be safe, don't take your children, do not. Um, many of us saw the video of the eight-year-old girl in Seattle who got um, maced in her face. I wouldn't take a child to a protest like that. Although, you know, you want them to learn, you don't want them to suffer for the learning. And I realized that many of us, especially at Standing Rock, many of us, uh, many of our people suffered and many of our allies suffered badly. But we didn't give up, did we? Thousands and thousands of people rallied to the cause of Standing Rock. And that is still being battled through the court system. Become an attorney. Become an attorney. That's a good, good way to use your activism also. My grandfather, um, Eugene Black Bear Sr. used to say to me, granddaughter, actually it was more like granddaughter, you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Listen more than you talk. You know, the wisdom of our elders is amazing. Um, my grandfather's been gone now for a while and I miss him every day, but his teachings resonate within me. So listen, listen to people, learn from people and be willing to process that information and not just, you know, take it personally of, oh, this person only, you know, only tells me to go do this, go do that. And I wanna be doing something else. Well, you can articulate that. You can say, you know, I'd really like to help by writing letters or um, contact, making phone calls. That's okay. It's okay to say what you're comfortable doing. That's important because if you're comfortable doing something, you'll do it. If you're not comfortable, it's gonna be harder. Public speaking used to be really, really hard for me. I was very shy and I pushed myself and pushed myself and pushed myself and can now speak to any group about many, many topics. I'm really blessed. I've studied things a lot. I've listened, I've learned and I continue to do so. Nobody knows everything and definitely I do not know everything. So listen. Listening is activism. Tell your stories with empathy. 
when you're talking to people and you're saying, this is why I want you to support my cause, be empathetic, be kind, listen to their responses. What can you do with that? Just think about it. When I was at Oregon State, I discovered that people were just very focused. They had like tunnel vision. And when I started there, I was um, a very gregarious person by that time in my life. And I was studying applied anthropology. So every day for a year, almost every day, I carried a little notebook and I'd walk down the sidewalk to different classes. And I mean, every day I would say, good morning. Hello. Hi, how are you? I would greet people. Every day it was different people. It was strangers. It was never the same person twice. It was um, people not on their cell phone or not talking to someone else. If they were walking by themselves and they were not in, they were not um, <clears throat> wearing headphones, I would greet them and I would make a note. Um, are they white? Are they black? Are they um, from other countries that I don't know? what country they're from, obviously, because I didn't ask. But I just uh, um, wrote down their ethnicity as perceived and whether they greeted me or not. And I included a head nod, you know, that's a greeting. Sometimes people just waved, didn't want to talk, just waved. And uh, many times people didn't talk at all. And so I collated all that information and it turned out that the least likely person to say hello to me was a young white girl, which I found fascinating. And the most likely person to say hello to me was a young black male. So I found those, those results fascinating. I would not have thought that other women would find me, uh, I don't know, intimidating or wouldn't want to engage with a simple hello, but that's what happens. So your activism can be as small as a, as a survey like that, something like that. You know, find out why aren't people greeting one another? Because the decline of manners is indicative of the decline of a society. Isn't that fascinating? So that's another little thing um, that I did to learn more about other people. Look at the global picture. What are What is your um, area of activism that you wanna focus on? Is it child hunger? Is it um, concentration camps? Is it um, children lost at the border? We, we, I read the other day that another 1500 children are missing at the border not missing because they ran back home because they were incarcerated in these, these concentration camps. They're missing because the records were not kept. Where are these children? We know our government isn't letting these children go. So that's a, that's a cause that's near and dear to my heart. And I try to educate others about that and keep our focus on that. It's kind of scary what's going on down there. So in your activism, remember, this isn't about you. We will see people who think um, or who say, oh, I'm an activist, oh, I do this, oh, I do that. And those people come and go. The people who are real and genuine um, are often the people who work behind the scenes. Um, they're the people who do the work tirelessly and don't step on the stage. You know, I'm not saying people who step on the stage are not uh, activists because many of them are, but they're every now and then you get somebody who comes along who's just in it for themselves. And we have seen that sadly uh, recently. So I won't go into that right now, but I will tell you, walk the talk. If you are promoting, um, if you are advocating against the climate crisis, if you're advocating for people to understand that the changes they make can be helpful 
even if they're little changes, then you have to make those changes yourself as well. It's not just, um, hey, somebody else will do the recycling. No, you gotta do your own recycling. This is Auntie Brene right here telling you, do your own recycling. Do everything you can to save this planet. It's, um, I read a study the other day and I am a nerd. I will tell you straight out, I'm a nerd. I read studies all the time and I'm an avid reader and I like learning. And I read a study that said in 2050, or no, I'm sorry, 2070, 50 years from now, um, billions of people are going to struggle with temperatures that are too high for comfortable living. So that's, that's scary. Those are my grandchildren that will be living in that time. In all, 50 years, I'll be long gone. I'll be looking down and saying, hey, y'all get busy. Be activists, change the world. So I'll be looking down doing that. So listen for my voice in the back of your head. When you're doing activism, don't be afraid to be creative. You know, we all all driven down the road and laughed at somebody else's bumper sticker, right? We've all done that. Um, I love my favorite bumper sticker was the one that for Bernie Sanders that had the little bird and it said vote for Birdie, Birdie Sanders. And I was like, that's really clever. Be clever, be creative, have fun. You know, if you can make somebody laugh, it's easier to win them over to your cause because they want to hear from you. They want to learn more from you. They enjoy listening to what you're saying. So don't be afraid to be funny. Don't be afraid to be silly. Um, I see people all the time with giant Nike swooshes on their back of their cars and their windows and stuff. And I think, did Nike pay you to advertise for them? I'm just wondering. I saw somebody with a monster tattoo on the back of her neck once. And um, I thought, well, that's interesting marketing on monster's part. And I wonder how much she got paid for that tattoo. Oh wait, she paid for that herself. And the funny part was because the tattoo was crooked. Um, so walk the talk, don't stop being an activist. I've been an activist almost my entire life, um, speaking up and out about, you know, against bullying, um, against violence. Violence is not traditional. None of us need violence in our lives. And I told a story once to somebody, I said, Oh yeah, this, you know, such and such happened and somebody got beat up and the response from the other person was, well, sounds like just another Rez story. No, those aren't our stories. Those aren't our ways. Um, and they, they shouldn't be our stories. We shouldn't hear about um, someone getting beat up because someone else doesn't like them or doesn't want them dating their brother, uncle, whatever, or because they were raped and the family members of the rapist came and beat them up. We don't need those stories and we don't need those people. Those are not healthy people, those are colonized people. And we as indigenous people need to educate others so, they, so their indigeneity is their strength, not their colonization. And that's another cause. There's so many, I told you. So another thing that you can do is you can advocate for legislation. Doesn't that sound daunting? It sounds scary, like, oh, way up here, no. It's right here in your heart. If you believe in something, then you can affect real visceral change. And um, you can tell people about your message and you can get them involved and you can demand legislation. Right now, the world is demanding police reform. And we see it happening. Good. There's simple ways to do that. 
um, write to your legislators, use ResistBot, write your letters, call the White House, call your legislators, fax them, email them, snail mail. I have one friend who's an activist who um, carried a sign from Washington State all the way to Washington, DC. She walked the whole way. Um, and she carried a sign that said, peace, all the way across the country. That's activism too. The youth at Standing Rock who ran all the way to DC, that's activism. It comes in so many different forms in so many different ways. It's not just um, someone standing on a street corner, although it's that as well, very much so it's that, but there's many, many different layers and pursuing legislation is a terrific way to affect change. What else can you do? You, you can run for office. You can do it. So why is that important? Um, especially if you're a, a youth or in college, run for government, it gives you a chance to make positive visceral change at your school. And it helps you to learn about um, how government works, albeit on a much smaller scale, but it teaches you a lot. There are groups that you can join that will help you give training or help give you training or um, other um, duties that will help you learn how to be an activist for them. You can, and many of you have, I'm certain, um, march in a protest. At this time, please practice safe social distancing, wear a mask, wear a face shield. COVID-19 also, um, it's reported it gets in through your eyes. So wear a mask, wear a face shield if you can. And if you're in a scary protest, that face shield may protect you from mace. I hate to say that. <clears throat> you can create posters, you can write songs, you can sing your song on the internet, you can make a YouTube channel, and you can talk about your causes that you're supporting, and you can encourage other people to support those causes, because causes need people. And if you get more people who are um, conveying their feelings and their thoughts about this important cause, then it can help effect change. So I talked to you earlier about um, that change.org petition that had hundreds of, you know, 133,000 people, which is a phenomenal number to me, it's amazing. So you can create public awareness on your Facebook, on your Instagram, on your um, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, anything. You, so I'm in opening up Netflix last night. Uh, I saw they had a banner that said Black Lives Matter. And I was really relieved to see that because a lot of companies are remaining silent. They'll take our money, but will they support us as human beings? We need to support the companies that support us. So that's another form of activism is voting with your pocketbook. If a company is not doing what you think they should be doing, don't buy their products. Tell your friends, don't buy their products. I've been boycotting Nestle now for about, I think three or four years because of their practices of um, going into communities and taking all the water. Um, they were in California and they, their permit had expired but they were still extracting thousands of gallons of water every day even though California was in a drought. So it's important to pick and choose and, and then create public awareness about those issues so that you can um, ensure people are listening. Ask them, engage them. Hey, what do you think about this? This is what I'm doing. Um, would you help me with it? I'm gonna make some posters. I'm gonna make some signs. Um, I'm going to work on a website. I want to promote um, 
I want to help out with the local animal shelter. I want to help stop food insecurity in my community. You don't have to do your activism on a global scale. You can do it at home. You could do something as simple as becoming a foster parent or becoming an adoptive parent. There are so many of our youth that are in need of good homes. That's a form of activism that comes with a lot of love. So that's one that's near and dear to my heart. I was taken in um, as a 17 year old. I, I was kicked out of my house by my um, former stepdad and a young couple took me in. They were 24 and 25 and it wasn't formal, but they showed me what a healthy relationship looked like and what a safe home looked like. They changed my life. So you could change the lives of others just by becoming a foster parent. Um, by becoming an adoptive parent, by promoting those things. Those are acts of activism. It's simple, you can do it all. Um, so do a survey. For a while there, Facebook was saying, oh, you can offer a survey, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if they're still doing that. I haven't paid attention, but you could survey your friends. So several years ago, I went back to college. I decided that someday I would be 45 with or without a bachelor's degree and I wanted to be with. So I went back to school at Eastern Oregon University, which is my alma mater. And I noticed that they had enough courses to offer a Native American studies minor, I thought. And so I, I spoke with my work study supervisor at that time, Jackie Grant, uh, much beloved, but um, passed on now. And Jackie said, yeah, you can work on that for your work study. She said, I've been trying to get that going for 14 years. I thought, oh my gosh, that's exhausting. Um, so I surveyed the students. I said, if we offered a native studies minor, would you take it? And then I collected those results. Then I surveyed teachers. If we offered these courses, would you teach them? Then I reached out to uh, Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Indian Reservation and the former general council chairman, John Barkley. And I said, would your council be willing to write a resolution in support of the native studies minor at Eastern Oregon University? And he was able to get, not only to convince the council, but to get that passed. And we presented all of our data and the resolution. And I've done a survey of all the Native Studies programs in the US and Canada. I did mention that nerd aspect, right? Uh, so I presented all of that to the president of the college at that time, Hosro Fatimi. And I allied myself with Dr. Linda Jarofsky at Eastern Oregon University. And she took it through the academic channels. It didn't fly the first time we tried it, it got shut down. But the second time, after four years of research and study and frustration and sweat, equity, um, it passed. So now there is a Native American Studies minor at Eastern Oregon University because of activism. Because Jackie Grant agreed, Linda Jarofsky agreed, the president of the college agreed, the Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Indian Reservation with John Barkley as their former chairman, they agreed this was a good thing. So change can happen, but it takes energy and it takes time. It, change does not happen fast normally. So you gotta be patient as an activist. Be patient with yourself, be patient with your cause. And it's okay to be frustrated. It's okay, you will get very frustrated. You may scream, you may cry. And I'll remind you that tears are a gift from the creator. Tears are for healing. So if you have to cry, then cry. And tears also remove toxins from your body. I find that interesting as well. So one of the other things you can do is raise money for your cause. Maybe there's a walkathon, maybe there's um, a bikeathon, maybe there's a, a jog, a, you know, 
a 10K, whatever, you know, you get it, you pay your fee, you get a t-shirt and you support a great cause and you get healthy. Healthy is good. So you can do that. Ask yourself, what is my cause? What do I want to do? And how can I affect real change? How can I make things better in my estimation for the world? Well, making things better for the world and for your own world starts with you. What are you doing to keep yourself centered? Are you going to ceremony? Are you um, going to cultural events? Are you um, doing COVID-19 and you're frustrated because there's no powwows and there's you know, no, hardly any cultural events? Find ways to keep yourself rooted and grounded. There is a um, community in Canada, the Hiltzuk people in Bella Bella. And I, I encourage you to Google this. You can put in Bella Bella and B-E-L-L-A. -L -L and the word, I'm typing it up on my other, on my laptop here at the same time. Um, so if you Google the words Bella Bella and suicide, an article comes up right away that says Bella Bella BC, the town that solved suicide. And this article is written by McLean's Magazine. And it didn't happen overnight. And it didn't happen from just one thing. It happened from um, several different things. And suicide is a huge problem in all our communities. The main thing that seemed to help was reconnecting the youth with the land. Um, they have, the Hiltzuk people have a community of about 1600 and they were losing almost one person a month. And this was, as you can well imagine, devastating. So they were able to uh, promote economic development. They were able to uh, promote a, 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 kind of <clears throat> a youth center that's open and is open for extensive hours. Uh, I'd have to look it up to see how many, but I think it's open uh, like 12 or 18 hours a day. They offer community cultural classes. They teach regalia making. They take their youth out in the field with the scientists who want to study their land and study their salmon and study their waterways. And they say, okay, you can come and do that. But in the summertime, you're going to take our youth out and you're gonna teach them how to do what you do. So in just 30 years, the Hiltzuk overcame many of the problems that they had by affecting social change, a massive social change. One of the people that was integral to this was um, a gentleman named Larry Jorgensen who came into the community was hired uh, to create programs to keep the children in school. Well, he fell in love with the land and he fell in love with a Hiltzuk woman, shocking. And um, then he helped the, the nation to heal. Um, he started taking them outside, teaching them about the watershed, um, taught them how to build cabins and taught them about their own territory, which encompasses more than 17,000 square kilometers. So by integrating all these things, culture, language, um, regalia making, singing, stewardship of the land, all those things came together to make their community stronger, to make their youth and their, their population stronger for one another and for themselves. That's activism. That is activism. Don't be afraid to choose something you believe in. It may not change things right now, 
but it may change things down the road. Activism like this, saving lives. You know, promotion of, of um, taking a class on assist, A-S-I-S-T, which is suicide first aid. You never know um, how a simple greeting can change a life, which is which brings me back to my earlier story about greeting people. I had heard from a friend who said, oh, my husband says hello to everyone we see, and it's so annoying. I'm like, why does he do that? And she said, he thinks, or he read something that said that a lot of people who commit suicide feel isolated and alone, and they don't see themselves as part of the world. They don't see that anyone cares. And so he wants to greet every person he meets just so that they know that he cares and that someone cares. So be that someone, greet everyone. And it's harder to do from behind a mask. I, I will attest to that, but it can be done and it should be done. But right now we're, we're all struggling with um, isolation and with anger and frustration and our world is changing drastically right before our eyes but be a part of that change. Be the change you want to see in the world. Be that change. Listen to the words of our ancestors. Listen to the wor words of our relatives, Martin Luther King Jr., um, Malcolm X. You know, there's just Suzanne Harjo, Joy Harjo, Deborah Parker. There are so many people Teresa Sheldon, there are so many people living today whose words can be admired. Not to mention the thousands of people behind us watching over us. Not to mention the wisdom of all those people that we carry within us. So science tells us that within our DNA, are the traumas that were suffered by our ancestors. Well, I'm here to tell you that within our DNA is the courage, the strength, the indomitable will of our people. We have survived genocide. We have survived atrocities beyond comprehension and being alive, being here, being you is an act of activism. Live your life well, live your life away from addiction, away from violence, promote traditional practices, encourage people who are in DV relationships to get out. They deserve better. Encourage those who are committing DV, get help. You deserve a better life and you learned a bad behavior, you can unlearn it. You can be safe, you can be a safe person. Let's move towards that. Let's move towards health and safety and caring for one another in a good way, with a good heart and a good mind as the Oneida say. Ask yourself, what can I do that's real and visceral? What can I do today, myself? And then find that cause and start doing all these little things. Promote it on social media, start a group. Um, someone I love dearly struggled with addiction. And once that um, addiction was behind that person, they started a group for um, folks who had been addicted to meth. And I can't tell you the level of pride that I felt to see somebody go that far. Nobody said to that person, oh, you should do this, you should do that. That person said, I wanna start a group. I wanna talk to other people and I want us to help each other because we understand it better than anyone else is going to. Start a group, talk to your friends. 
do what you need to do to affect real change, whether it's a small change or a big change. I know you can do it. And I really wanna thank you for tuning in today to Native Wellness Institute's um, Native Wellness Power Hour. It's been my privilege and my honor to share this time with you. And I really appreciate you. And I appreciate all you're doing and all that you're going to do. Your life matters. You matter. The change that you can effect matters. So let's continue to stand up for one another, for all of our relatives who need our voices and need our time and all the causes that are near and dear to our heart. Let's stand up for those. Let's stand up for one another. Thank you. <laughs>